Hi, Cody. It's Mrs. Olson. So this is the first set of Cornell notes for semester two in world history, and it's titled 2.2.2, The Scientific Revolution. So this is what I have open right here, and then ready to go is the Cornell notes template. And so what I've already done is to write for the topic the title of the chapter. So 2.2.2, Scientific scientific revolution. Now at the top of each Cornell notes is this section which has you write the essential question. Now oftentimes at the beginning of the reading section that first essential question is going to be on that first page. So where would we be today without scientific discovery? This makes sense because the section is called the scientific revolution. So if science didn't exist, right, a revolution is something that starts something. If science today didn't exist the way that we know it, um, we, where would we be today without science? So that's why this question makes sense for the essential question. So here it is. Where would we be today without scientific discovery? Okay, so that's what goes there. Now, just a quick reminder, in this column, you are writing questions, and you only need one, two, three, you don't need very many, and you are also writing main ideas, terms, okay? Everything else, details, uh, specific historical information like dates, um, people's names, explanations, all of that stuff goes in the right column, okay? So here on this first page is really just an introductory page. It begins by saying, did you know that in medieval Europe, many people believed the sun revolved around the earth, blood came from the liver, and the shape of people's heads determined their personalities. All right, so that's just saying that's what a lot of people in med medieval Europe believed, okay? Kind of very different from the way that we think now. It's probably hard for you to imagine believing these things. That's because science and the scientific revolution have had such an, a great impact on modern thinking. Thanks to centuries of scientific experiments, we now know how the Earth actually moves through space, how human bodies function, and how and why different chemical reactions occur. Okay, if you doubt how much science affects your life in the way you think, just try to imagine a single day without scientific products, without these scientific products in the pictures above. So, if we look at these, the kids are using computers, the doctor is using a stethoscope to hear the woman's breathing, here is a weatherman, so we know that he's got a screen behind him, and we would be watching him on a screen. And then, of course, these you see all over eastern Washington. I bet you've been riding east of um, east of the mountains on your quad, huh? Um, these are windmills, mills that help us to generate energy. Okay, so where would we be today without some of these things in our life? All right, this is an introductory page. There really isn't much information on here about the scientific revolution. Okay, so it helps to set up what you are going to be reading about. So let's go to the second page. And this is titled, A Defining Characteristic of Modern Science. The scientific revolution was marked by the emergence of modern science, which is largely defined by the scientific method. Okay, so this term is defined, and it is bolded, and it's a different color. So that should tip us off that this is one of the terms that is going to be important in remembering and understanding for the section. 
This method was developed in the 1500s to explore and test how the natural world worked. All right, so this is the first thing that we're going to write down, okay? So we are going to write scientific method here. And the information that we found out about it was its definition and that it was developed in the 1500s. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bullet point and write what the definition is, which is right here. Process of developing a hypothesis. So I might even say something like this. Definition. Okay, so that's the definition, and we also know that the scientific method was developed in the 1500s. So I'm going to use the next line here and say developed in, you don't have to use the word the because we are writing um, notes, so it doesn't be complete sentences, okay? So continuing. Scholars use the scientific method first, ask a question, then formulate a hypothesis, and finally conduct an experiment from which a conclusion can be drawn. This method gives scientists empirical data, and they define it here, data that are based on observation and experience in order to prove or disprove people's assumptions. This was a radical way of thinking that completely transformed the field of science. So this has a lot of important information in it, and one is the term hypothesis. Now, because we have scientific brains because we live in the 2000s, we know that the scientific method uses a hypothesis. So I am going to organize the information and put the word hypothesis here because we've learned about it in science before. And instead of including it on this side because it goes under scientific method, Okay, and I'm also, instead of writing out the entire sentence, I'm going to use these words right here, observation and experience, and put them underneath the main idea of scientific method. So you have to be able to see it, observe it, and you have to be able to do something with it. You have to prove it, right? That's part of the scientific method. Okay, you always want to click on these things, these interactive graphics, and this is just showing us probably what you've learned about in science before, the scientific method. Okay, so that we're going to leave that just like this on the first part of the Cornell notes. Okay, so now we're going to go to the third page. And I hope this is helping. I know it's probably tedious for you to look and listen uh, this way, but hopefully it'll help going step by step like this. All right, so this is called, or this page is titled, Why Won't My Car Start? One of the most important steps in the scientific method is the formulation of a hypothesis. The word hypothesis comes from ancient Greek and is an idea or theory about what causes an observed phenomenon like lightning or an earthquake. All right, so here they give you this scenario and they're just trying to make you think about the scientific method, right, to help us understand where it all came from. Now, this part we don't need to write down because it's just helping us to think. Okay, 
So I'm going to go to the fourth page, and this reads, why did the revolution, why did this revolution in scientific thinking occur in Europe? So here in this paragraph, now because I'm making a video, I'm not going to read this one, but you always want to read every single sentence. Okay, and then this is setting up for this graphic right here. So we want Early to look at these ages, because they are important <laughs> for helping us understand what happened. So you would listen. These are always fun to kind of do, right? You press play and there's a narrator that starts reading this and then you just follow along. Okay, so in the early Middle Ages, it says that Greek was the primary language of science. Um, it actually starts to decline in Western Europe. Most scientific inquiry became based on sources that were often incomplete or accurate. At the same time, the general scope of education in Western Europe was reduced. Not only were fewer people scholars, but any scholarship that did happen was focused almost on exclusively on studying the Bible. Okay, so this is, we're kind of providing a timeline. We would write early middle ages and the big idea here is that um, people were focused mostly on studying the Bible. So again, I'm not going to write a complete sentence because I'm writing notes. So I'm going to say like this, focus, studying, the Bible. Okay. Now we have to go to the next part of the timeline. High Middle Ages, 1000 to th so we fast forward a little bit to what they call the High Middle Ages. This says that European scholars rediscovered ancient Greek and Arabic texts. Throughout Western Europe, universities supported by the Roman Catholic Church emerged. They focus on studying these texts to answer questions about the natural world. It was during this period that Roger Bacon, building on the work of Arab and Christian researchers, developed an approach to science based on observation, hypothesis, and experimentation. Okay, so... I know, because I've read this section before, I know that Roger Bacon is going to come up next or later on in the, the chapter. So I'm going to leave him just for a little while, okay? But it would be good for you to write something down. I just know that he's going to come a little bit later, okay? Late Middle Ages. So, Late Middle Ages. Something big happened in the late Middle Ages, and I'm going to fast forward just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and that was events like the Hundred Years War and Black Death devastated European populations, and because of that, the scientific discovery was put on hold. So, um, I'm going to put late Middle Ages, the... Hundred Years War and yeah, Black Death put the scientific dis discovery on hold. Okay, and let's go to our last one here. Early Renaissance, fourteen hundred. All right, early Renaissance. The devastation of the Middle Ages gave rise to the Renaissance in the 15th century. During this time, great advances occurred in geography, chemistry, physics, astronomy, and mathematics. The invention of the printing press helped spread ideas and make scholarly texts available to people outside the university system. So, I am going to say... Renaissance and say actually I don't need to capitalize that because ah, it's just gonna capitalize it. Great advances made in geography, chemistry. 
physics. Oops. Astronomy and math. Okay. All right. So that's the last part of our timeline. We're going to go to the next page. And this one is all about Nicholas Copernicus. Okay. So this introduces the scientific um, earliest scientific revolutions earliest thinkers okay and it says starting right here um, historians do agree that one of the earliest moments of the scientific revolution occurred in 1543 when Nicholas Copernicus published on the revolution of the heavenly spheres so that's the name of his book in this book Copernicus dared to put the Sun not the earth at the center of the solar system this was shocking because until that time the Bible the Roman Catholic Church even ancient Greek and Roman philosophers had told everyone otherwise by suggesting differently Copernicus was forcing people to reconsider one of their most basic beliefs. Okay, so the big idea from this page is Nicholas Copernicus. So we are going to write his name here. And what kind of information should we include? Okay, so underneath this, it tells us that he is a Polish astronomer. So that's important to know that he came from Poland and his study of science is astronomy. Astronomer. Okay. And then we also know that in 1543, he wrote a book called On the Revolution of the Heavenly Spheres. Now, do you remember what it was about? If you are telling me that it is um, about the uh, sun being the center of the solar system, you're right. And this was a big deal because ideas defied the Roman Catholic Church and we know that the Roman Catholic Church had a lot of power okay so I'm gonna end here um, even though you still have a bunch of pages to do okay and I'm gonna help you write a question so remember there doesn't have to be a lot of questions you want mostly main ideas but you do need to include one or two or three questions in the left column so your questions can be like inquiry they can be wondering type of questions so we might say something like Did Copernicus receive hate mail? <laughs> because we are thinking about him being unpopular with what was believed at the time and the Roman Catholic Church having a lot of power. So if you were um, someone who believed in Catholicism and went to church every week, you might not like what Copernicus had to say. So that's where this question comes in at. Now you can also write questions based on the information. So if you wanted to do it that way, you could say something like, when did Copernicus write his book? And the answer is 1543. Okay? Now I'm going to bring this into view just a little bit more. And so you have to go through all 19 pages and really when you when you have a section that has this many pages don't do it all in one sitting because that'll just get awful um, know that it isn't always quite 19 pages so 
like on page 17, this is kind of where it ends, okay? So this is talking about the modern world today. You can see that there's a modern steam engine there. And this is checking for understanding, so that's not going to be anything that you record information from. And then this doesn't have any information on it either. So really 17 pages instead of 19 pages, okay? Now, when you're all done with, say, the 17 pages, always make sure that you write your summary. So this is going to sum up everything that you have written inside of the notes, okay? So I only give you one page for the template, but you can always copy more pages down. So for a section that has 17 pages in it, you're, you're going to use multiple pages of the Cornell notes. And if you wanted to make it smaller, so for example, this is in, um, uh, the font is the size 15, you could always make it smaller if you wanted to fit more on one page. Okay, I hope that helps a little bit. As you could tell, you have to go through each page and go sentence by sentence to figure out what parts are important to write down. Let me know if you have questions. Bye!